So we've just arrived here in South Africa to set up cameras donated by Wildlife Protection Solutions and hopefully we can get a handle on some of these poaching problems. You can see how they cut it and they bend it open. Now this is the section that I said that's nothing happening really. There's no control in here, no one's moving through here. There's an old house at the back there that they can use to hide away. The shop or the village is just this side. So you can see there's a nice clear path that they can walk through. And they never will walk, leave a, leave a print there, you know, because you will pick it up easily. So if they do, they will literally go and they will walk like that and step on the grass. So you don't see the tracks so easily. If it's a big open area where you can actually see where they want to cover, they will tiptoe over it. You know, like huge print on their toes. Oh man. Drive. It will literally look like zebra cross. It looks like zebra cross. So they try to cover their tracks all the time. They do it. They always have their methods in um, anti tracking. You know, even walking backwards on their heels. Just leaving as little possible thing that looks like a track. Wow. So yeah. They, uh, and will you leave this open for them to maybe well, come back and you can catch them? At this stage, is we, we don't want them to think that we know that this is their spot. So we actually want to catch the culprit. Because otherwise, if we fix it now, they're going to know something is not right. They're just going to go and move to another spot and start there. So we've got our setup here now and I think uh, we leave it like this. For first this time. You're saying? Poachers are getting more daring too. Yeah, man. So, you know, the way it used to be, and this was just all of a year, year and a half ago, is that poaching was always done during moonlight. Uh, rhino poachers and elephant poachers and lion and whatever, when they come stay multiple days, they find a certain spot, they kind of hunker down and then go out at night. And they just don't care anymore. Um, I think that's because they're realizing how valuable it is on the black market. And the more they kill, kill the, the more costs go up because there's less quantity. So that's kind of the situation that's taking place now. And these guys, I mean, they'll sit in the bush. And if you look out here, I mean, you can see these plants are are five feet tall. I mean, the grass is right now. And so if they're dry, if they're just sitting in there, it's hard enough to see them. We haven't seen our rhino taking, this is now the sixth drive on the property, 8,000 hectares, six trips around, every single road. We haven't seen the rhino, and you're looking at an average height of a rhino um, from foot to mid of back, probably six feet, six, seven feet at the tallest. So you can imagine, you're only going to see them for a foot, and they walk with their head down and their horn up like out in front of them like that so it's very hard for these poachers to see that's why they spend days trying to do it but the reality is that they don't care anymore they'll sit out there and they'll, they're opportunistic they're going to do whatever's best and they're not going to come home empty handed or try not to mm -hmm. so you know you these guys if they're with a syndicate they're given a gun that's pieced together somehow that they found and then they're given a certain amount of bullets to use and so they got to be pretty damn sure what they're hitting um, is going to get them going to going to the end result's going to be money in their pocket, right? There's no mercy for them. Life is for them nothing to, to kill somebody just just to get a rhino on. They will kill hundreds of people. It's quite um, dangerous. And you're saying it's getting more dangerous for you? Yeah, definitely because the guys are over nice. They have got uh, quite good weapons and they. Every day they, they get better equipment to, to do it.
what can WPS do to help you? Well, you already help us a lot with the, the cameras you installed on the on the property, and uh, you already help us with other um, equipment that we can use to see at night, night vision, all that type of thing. So you, you would say a combination of the cameras and some of the equipment that we can provide you really helps? Yes, definitely. Uh, okay. This is our first morning without rain. Uh, it's been raining for the past like five days now. You can see the sunrise behind me. It's completely gorgeous out. And uh, I'm going to take you around camp, show you kind of how everything works. And now that we finally have some sunshine, we'll actually be able to get out into the field and start to throw some cameras up, get some protection for these animals. So now we're Oh, well, I don't know, about 40 feet up in the air, maybe a little less, maybe 30. And here is camp. Here's the office. It's early in the morning. It's a bit misty out. But this is what it's all about. Alright, so we've been working all morning. We've finally got some cameras programmed and ready to go. Corey's been all over that. Now we're going to head out to the field and see if we can't get some cameras set up. You think part of the solution is to get cameras all over the place? Part. Part of it anyways. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, everything helps, eh? You know, it's there's not a bad idea when it comes to animal conservation. It's just about more people getting involved and more people understanding you know that we're all whether you're religious or not whether you believe in something bigger than you or don't we're all a part of something we're all a part of creation and we need to work together better instead of trying to constantly destroy everything you know man's biggest problem is we don't have limitations because we think we're such the top of the food chain that who cares damn be down you know and that's just not true man I hate that. You know, I think everything helps. Any kind of donation you can make. People down here, these rangers are under-equipped. Even the private ones that work for people that have a lot of money, it's you can't put a ton of money into it because you got a lot of stuff going on. You know, these farmers got to have... The reason why they have these animals is A, for some of them for lodges, some of them for hunting. And if they can't be equitable on it they're not gonna have them I mean that's that's the bottom line principle so it's really a combination kind of of cameras equipping the Rangers and then what's the third part cameras equipping the Rangers and uh, and just being helpful anywhere you can man I, I you know there's not really a grand third step it's kind of open-ended it's education to me. I mean, personally, that would be one of the most important things. I mean, you got to realize these guys that live in these townships that are doing the poaching see no hope, no future, nothing else. I mean, not the syndications, the ones that come from very poor areas. It's an opportunity for them because they're not afforded other opportunities. I mean, you're looking at an unemployment rate, 80% in some of these countries, way more than that. So you get to a point where... You know, we, we have to understand what the economic situation is. And if the kids, the little kids today aren't being taught the value of these animals, then they turn into their parents and their neighbors that just don't care. But you have a good opportunity at a very young age to catch these kids and really show them the opportunity of how to work with the, uh, how to work with the animals, how to profit from the animals. Um, and how to care for the animals. I mean, they are sustainable. It's not like there has to be humans or animals. We can coexist. We humans just got to realize we got to be able to more efficiently live with them instead of against them.